Guys, we're looking from the book of Mark, chapter 12. And I want you to, I want to challenge you, we're going to look at the whole chapter, but just as it is put together in certain themes, I want to say, I want to challenge you to go and hear from God. God, what are you saying to me from your word? As I would say today, what certain things that stood out for me, what God spoke to me. But there's another hundred things that God will give you out of this chapter, what he will speak to you. And I challenge you to not just go and read the Bible as a storybook, but also I know you're not saying that, but also not just read in a factual way. But God help me to, to from the letter of the law that can bring death in me, that it will not be the letter of the law, but the truth that will bring freedom through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, from that place, what I want you to write down, the main question, what makes you different as a child of God? What makes you different as a child of God than the guy out there in the world? Guys, there's a lot of things that we can do. There's a lot of things that we can say. But there's a difference that must come, a uniqueness that must come through your life. A uniqueness that must come through your life. That's not part of the guy out there in the world. Are you with me? Are you with me? First of all, the parable of the tenants. Man planted a vineyard, put a wall around it, dug a pit for the wine press, built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. Harvest time, harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, sent him away with nothing, empty-handed. Then he sent another one. They struck him, this man on the head, treated him shamefully, sent another one. They killed, sent many others. Some they beat, others they killed. Who are you? Who am I? My question, first one. Is it your business that makes you different? Child of God, what is making you different? Is it your business? The owner, the owner of the vineyard is not you. You are not the owner of your business. The owner is God himself. He's the master. You are renting from him. What you have has been given by God. You are renting from Him. And He expects certain fruit from your life. He expects 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. He expects that two talents must be four, come four, five must become ten. He expects that of you. And what you do, you will have to do as if unto the Lord. Hello? What makes you different in your job, in your business? And that what you do out there. Because what you have, you are not the owner. You are not the owner. It belongs to God. Your business belongs to Him. Are you with me? If you are cleaning the floor, if you are the CEO of the company, you are only renting from God. And whenever He expects a certain harvest, whenever He wants to tell you, this million rand will go for orphans in Antarctica. This, you will help with that. That you will help whenever he expects that you will be willing to say yes. And not that that voice that will come to you, I want to say that you will beat up that voice, if I can say like that. What God wants from you, my brother, my sister, is to do whatever you do, as if unto him in your business, that you will not claim it as your own. Because in the claiming as your own at the end of the day, his servants, what he will send, and that's most of the time the Holy Spirit, that will be sent to you to tell you, I want you to sow this in this. I want you this to go in that way. I want you to, to give a job to that, those five guys. They must come in. 
I want you to plant another satellite, what do you call it? Uh, business in Pofader. I want, hello, that you will hear God's strategy for everything that you do, especially when you become successful. So easily I can stand back. That's not the way it's happening. That's not the way it's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you, are you with me? That we can just do our own thing. No. May God help you. May God help me. In Jesus' name. Are you with me? He sent the son whom he really loved. They will respect my son. But they didn't. They killed him. And you know what he talks about in that sense. The father sent his son. And he believed that we will respect him. But we, we didn't. And he will send his son to your business. And that you set up your business in such a way that you will respect him whenever he wants to say whatever he wants to say, whatever he wants to do with your business, that you will respect him and his presence. Otherwise, whatever God's word would be to you in your business, it will be a stumbling block for your business. Or it says there further, or it could be the cornerstone, that with that you built further. That is the main security. That is the point of reference for whatever you will build will be with Christ Jesus. It's the Father's business and the Father sent the Son because through the prophets many were sent. That They stoned him. They, they beat them up. And then he sent his Son. And he has the faith. The faith that what? That they will respect him. Will you respect Jesus Christ in your business? Your business is whatever job you have. There where you work. If you're the owner or whoever. If it's owner, if it's the cleaner, they are all just renting from the Lord. They're all just renting from the Lord. If you have a business of 10 billion, if you have a business of 10 rand. If you go and do a peace job out there, same difference. Same. You're all just renting from the Lord. Will you, in what you do, respect the Son of God? Because out of that place, whatever the word is, your, what you do, your business, your work, will be a, it, will be, it will stumble over the word of God. You have the word of God against your business, against your financial plans, against your strategies, against your great ideas. If you don't first bring it to the owner, to the boss, Jesus Christ. Amen. You just tell your neighbor, you're just renting. Tell your neighbor, Paso. <laughs> you're just renting. Hallelujah. Let Christ be the cornerstone. Let Christ be the cornerstone that people will say, Wow, that child of God, there's some excellence in his building there's some excellence in his business how he does things is just different what makes you different my brother my sister okay number two that's then paying the taxes is it your money your integrity that makes you different the word actually is integrity is it your t integrity? When this, from this verse 13 that you write down, it's Mark 12 from verse 13. They called to him, they came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, with the truth. But, how will we test integrity? Money. One of the biggest things will be money. The integrity. And then they bring, brought it to him. And verse 17, and then Jesus replied to them. Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. You know, we will not check you up about your tithes and offering. I also believe a principle that my spiritual father told me that I will not look into the books of who is paying tithes and who not. So I don't look in the bank account. Some other, other guys that must do that, they, 
put that together, financial strategies and all the, uh, everything that's happening, and then I just see totals of whatever must happen, but I don't want to know that. We will not check you up, but integrity will check you up about your tithing, your character. God says, pay what is his, and Caesar what is his. No, we say, oh, but this government is corrupt, and they do this, I do this, and I don't agree with you, blah, 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 blah. And you think, in any case, you can use that money much better than what will go to a corrupt system. Caesar was on top of the list of corruption. And God said, about the, this guy that unfairly is just making you actually slaves. He's from another country. He's sitting there, but he just wants all the money from all the places, from all the countries that he conquers. Man, it's like a swear word, Caesar. And Jesus said, pay to Caesar what is his. He's, what is his? <laughs> Nothing of us is his. Where you are, you submit to authority. And if you're a man of integrity, there where you're alone, where you can, Afrikaans is quirk die boeken, cook the books. I don't think the English they have such a saying. <laughs> Where you can manipulate the books in certain things. There's a, there's, a, there's a way that you must not be stupid, that you must have wisdom with the tax. But there's a way where, where you are crooked, where you are tested in your integrity. Be a man, be a woman of integrity. You alone know. I cannot tell you integrity for me. <laughs> I can say you must love her. I say, don't steal, don't lie, don't curse, but integrity. Uh, at the end of the day, it's inside of you. That quality that is awesome, that not even money can take it. Are you with me? The love of money, the root of all evil. That was the only thing that could take one of the 12 closest disciples, 12 people that were walk with Jesus for years, for three years walked with Christ but money could take that man away that he will say, for money here is the man for money, here is the man don't, don't go into that place, because otherwise for money you will walk away from God but integrity will protect you that when you have money in your hand, when you, there's certain success, or when you are in poverty, but you focus on poverty and, and you're focusing, when one day I have money, then, that's a man with greed. That's a man with a focus on the money. And God must help about the money, not just I'm focused on God, and whatever you ask of me, that will happen. Are you with me? So what the taxes and the tithing is not what you're going to give God. That's rubbish. It's what you owe them. Give back to Caesar's what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. What is his. It's not yours to give unto him. It's his. So don't be a thief. Not to government. Don't be a thief to God. If you're a man or a woman of integrity. Are you with me? Especially when you start to stand out as a man of integrity. Then hell will test you. But one of the biggest tests will be the money. So Jesus Christ standing out and Pharisees recognize him as a man of integrity. And call him a man of integrity. But then the tests come with money. With your money, my brother, my sister... Are you standing out as a child of God with your integrity? Number three, verse 18, all the way through to 27. Is it your future? The way that you deal with your future, the way that you deal with your future, this was about the resurrection, this was about marriage. Uh, they asked God, God, this, a man has a wife, and then uh, the man dies. Now, by law, Luckily, it's not New Testament law. Hallelujah. Then the brother must marry the wife. Phew. You think you must marry your brother's wife? 
Hallelujah. Anybody? Uh uh. And then no child. And then another brother marry, and then no child. And then another brother marry, and then no child. Seven brothers. Now, in heaven, whose husband is she? It's a valid question. And Jesus actually didn't really give an answer. He didn't really give an answer. He just said, you don't understand how it works there. You don't have the right understanding about your future. Because these guys even didn't believe in the resurrection. So they tried to, to reason it out and just to, just to uh, emphasize the fact that there is actually no resurrection. The Sadducees. And then Jesus said, okay, let me tell you, it's written in the word. God is the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So Abram, Isaac, and Jacob is living today. So the issue that I have with you, God says, is not, is not there to answer your question, can I have ice cream or... Uh, Malfa pudding. He's there, and then at that moment, he's telling you, eat your meat. And you feel that God is not answering you. No, he answered you. But he answered you like a father. <laughs> While you're talking about something to eat, this is what you're going to do. And you're praying you fast, and you're praying you fast, and you're praying for pudding. That sounds weird. And you're praying you fast because you're waiting for the word ice cream or malfa pudding. And you're praying, you're praying, and... God later is just, he can be silent because he spoke now 50 times that he said, eat your meat. But still obsessed with certain things about my future. I want to know about this my future, that in my future, that. Am I going to do this business? Am I going to do that business? How will I pay that debt? How will I do with this finance? How will I deal with this? How will I? Anybody of you were there in the past about especially finances, hello, and that type of things about my future? Is that the woman? Is that not the woman, Lord? Uh, is etc., uh, <clears throat> etc. Et so, what am I saying? Oh, who's the two sitting there? I see. Okay. So, what is what am I saying? You're going to talk to God about your future. He will talk to you about your future. But he will say what he wants to say. He didn't really answer their question. Not at all. He didn't say, no, he's not going to be, he, they, not going to be all the husbands of this, because they're going to be this, and she's going to be that. No, he didn't answer. But he addressed what he wanted to address about the future. Because that is his, you're supposed to understand the resurrection. You're supposed to understand the, the resurrection. You don't have the truth. You don't have the right perspective about your future. So let me share with you while you're talking about your future. Be open. Be open. Be open to God. And because there's certain things that he does not want to tell you. He doesn't want to tell you that. He has certain success for you in the future. He cannot tell you that because you're going to mess it up if you know it now because you're going to go shortcut. You're going to find a strategy. You're going to find a vision. You're going to find a thing the, the way that you're going to do it and the way you and you will hear the voice of the vision and instead of the voice of God. Because with God, the strategy is sometimes freaky, sometimes really different because the mind of Christ is different than the mind of man. Natural mind does not accept the things of God. And because for God, it's not about being successful in that job. It's not about success in certain things. It's about walking with you. You wanted to walk with Adam and Eve when he called them. Are you with me? So be careful in what you ask about your future and how you can become frustrated because you want certain answers. That's how the guy in the world wants to know. He wants to know the future. So let's go and see what the stars are saying or whatever. No. May you walk accurately with God. Amen. What makes you different? Please. Look at this. Number four. You see, your relationships, what makes you different? What makes you different as a child of God? In this, this part, talking about the greatest commandment, saying, what is the greatest commandment? That you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, mind, everything. 
And then the second that is exactly next to that, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But it's impossible, it's impossible to love God with the love that you have in yourself. Loving yourself is wicked, is selfish. You need to turn away from it. How did you become a child of God? By receiving God's love. By realizing God loved me so much that he gave his son. And you received Christ. And when you received Christ, you received the source of love. Because 1 John 4 says, God is love. So you receive the passion of heaven. You receive the energy, the motivation that is there in heaven. And that is love. In here, there's an energy, there's a motivation. And it's called love. But the love in you is God. So with that what is from heaven, with the passion from heaven, you must love the Father. That's the greatest commandment. If you want to have any relationship that is not some fake thing, you need to learn how to, with the passion and the energy from God, that is from Him, that He put in your spirit. Romans 5.5, 5, hey? Holy Spirit poured out the love of the Father in my heart. With that, you love God. With that passion, that energy, you love Him. And then the second, you need to love others the way that you love yourself. How must I love myself with the passion and the energy that is from heaven? The way that God loves me, so I must love myself. But if I'm confused about love, if I don't understand the pure, the cleanness, the cleanness, the pureness of His love, then my love for people will be some manipulative, dirty, whatever. I will open my heart for people when I want to. I will love this one and love that one. No, with this one I have an issue. So until we sort it out, you know, my heart is actually closed. I, I'm miff. What's the English for miff? I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, you know, miff, you know, like that. With that person, you know, you give us the smile, hey, but there's something in the heart. Yeah, it's lack of fake. It's rotten. On the inside. No, we must first sort it out, and then there can be a relationship. Okay, that is when you are fake with God. But if you are different than the guy in the world, you have a relationship because you have a relationship with God. But if I don't love myself, others must love me for me to feel worthy, for me to feel valuable. They must love me. And if they don't love me, I'm depressed, I'm hurt, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. Why? Because God, you loving me, that's not enough. Sorry. It's not going to work for me. Your love, and you loving me, you gave yourself everything to me. It's not going to work for me. I need more. <laughs> yeah. Respect God's love. Respect who he is. Receive his love. Then love him with that passion. And then love yourself with a passion. What does that mean? You see yourself like he sees you. You value what God has given you. You respect what God has given you and you'll respect what God has given others. You don't respect what God has given you. You will not respect what God has given others. You have issue with yourself, you will always have issue with people. If you have always issues with people, if you have this issue with this one guy and it's going over and over and over, the problem is you have an issue with yourself and in that actually issue with God. Sort out yourself. As a child of God, if you believe you are different than the child of the world. Okay, God must help us all. Amen. Are you with me? So in the loving yourself, no, there's a rotten, selfish love that I must hate the flesh in me. I must hate the flesh in me. But God said, deny yourself and follow me, not destroy yourself. Religion will destroy you. Religion will destroy because you try to perform. You try to do it right and it does not work. You try to do it right so that you're not in trouble with that leader or in trouble with your wife or in trouble with your husband or in trouble with your parents or whatever. Okay, that's okay. But, the, but you're not in his love. Get into Father's love for your life. Amen. Are you with me? That's number four that makes you different. Number five. Is it your Jesus?
Is it your relationship? Is it your Jesus? Is it your Jesus? Nazareth, the brothers, the auntie, the uncle says, but that's our Jesus. He's the son of Joseph. That's our Jesus. He's my friend. We played together. We grew up together. We sit at, in school together. And that's our Jesus. You don't hate him. You don't, you're not bad. You don't have a bad agenda with him. It's my Jesus. Hello. But that's the only place where Christ did not do the miracles. Where Christ could not manifest himself as son of God. Because it was there, Jesus. You can get so familiar with the Jesus in you and in others around you. And especially, yeah, people close to you. You see their flaws, man. You see the, the rubbish in their lives. You, see, you know the rubbish in yourself. And then sometimes it's difficult to respect the Son of God in your life. It's difficult to respect the Son of God in the people that are really close to you. Son of God in that student or in that leader or in that brother or in that sister. But do that so that Jesus must walk out of Nazareth. So Jesus must walk out of your relationships, walk out of your perspectives. He must walk out because you ask him to walk out. Are you here? With the focus here? May God help us. That you will have, we will have the guts to respect one another in Christ. Are you with me? Because that's one of the biggest down floors. That that's the place where he walked away. That's the place where he walked away. Not from the, not from the man rotten in sin. Not from that man he walked away, but from the guys where he was there, Jesus, the son, the son of Joseph. So you can hear while I'm preaching, and you can be busy with other things. You talk to others, you do this, because you are used to how to be in the flesh with one another. So that you are sitting here, and Jesus must walk past you. He cannot do something in your life this morning. Because you're busy with other things. You know, you've heard the word, you heard the stuff, you've heard the, you are used to it. You're used to the Jesus that you played with. You're used to the Jesus that, that you know. Jesus is the son of Joseph in your life, man. You sit here, you speak to others, you and your wife, you have your own thing, blah, 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 blah. It's okay. You have the son of Joseph in your life. Jesus, the son of God, must walk away. He must turn around. No, he's not going to be like that anymore in Jesus' name. That familiar demon in the church, it must go. But when we recognize one another in spirit, then it's something else. When Paul had to address the Corinthians with all their petty issues with one another the whole time, he said, I want to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. I don't want to know your issues. I don't want to know your petty things. And if you want to take your heart away from Christ... That's your issue. Because if I have a petty issue with Johan, it's because, first of all, I took my heart away from Christ. For my flesh, Paul wants to know Christ crucified. For my spirit, Paul wants to know the resurrected Christ. So in your life, how are you walking in victory with the resurrected Christ? In your life, how are you walking with the crucified Christ on the cross where you know where your flesh and your issues belong? On the cross. On the cross. This part of me on the cross. That part of me with Christ in, seated in heavenly places. Going full out with what God has for me. <sighs> then life is Christ, dies gain. Amen. Amen. You with me? May God help you, my brother, my sister. It's dangerous when we are sitting around the word. Because you're gonna you're gonna walk out here and you're gonna be more. You're gonna be more walking with the son of Joseph. Or you're going to walk more with the Son of God. And how can you know that? Based on how you allow the Word to touch you. How you allow to focus. You know, when you love something really. You love to do something really, really intensely. When you do it, you are focused on it. Those guys with the rugby. You know, they are sitting there, but they are focused. You know, they eat the popcorn. Yeah, you've seen that. But it, some of it is even falling. They, they miss their mouth, you know. And... and 
No, there are only two people that I saw doing that in my life. But, uh, but they are so focused. You, any, you saw any people? You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? When people really love something, they are focused in it. But when we come together with a word, hell will make sure that you cannot focus on Christ. You have something to say to this one, that one, focusing here, there, thinking about that, thinking about that, thinking about you, as long as you don't respect the Son of God. As long as you sit here so that when you walk out here, you have less respect for the Son of God, because you, with your, not necessarily your wife, or with a person along you here, you are a little bit busy with that, a little bit busy with that. And hell says to one another, how pathetic, that guy. Oh, that's not one of us. There's other people. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, when you open this, you focus. When somebody speak about the word, you focus. When somebody worship, you focus. Because you have respect for your God. You see him not as the son of Joseph, where he needs to walk past you. You see him as the son of God, where he's welcome in your place, in your life, in your relationships, in, you, in what is happening in you. And from that place, God, whatever he wants to do, here I am. God's going to help you in Jesus' name. And me in Jesus' name. Number six, is it your image? Ask your neighbor, your image. Okay. Warning against the teachers of the law. What are we talking about? Watch out. Watch out for the teachers of the law. They are like walk around with flowing robes. And greeted, need to be greeted, respected in the marketplaces. Uh, they are being given the most important seats in the synagogues. The honor, place of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses for the show, make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Ish, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? What makes you different, child of God? Child of God, may what makes you different? Child of God, what makes you different? Is if you sit here... And you have a desire to see yourself in Christ. Your image is in Him. Your image is in Him. You want to look at yourself, you want to have a, what's a self-built, self-image. If you cannot look at Christ, you cannot find the self-image. So hell must give you an image. Your flesh must give you an image. The world must give you an image. And you will follow the image of what they will give you. Unless you look at Christ. Because only in Christ... Your life is hidden. Your life is hidden in Christ. So if you don't first, logic, one plus one is two. If you don't first look at Christ, you cannot look in Christ to find you. You. Let's say, my life is hidden in Christ. So you want to find the image, first of all, look at Christ. In every situation, look at Christ. Don't look at your performance. Don't look at first the failure, the success, the this, what they are saying about you, what this guy is doing with you, what that guy, how they relate, how this man relates. Don't look at that first. Look at Christ. And five, a life that can have substance, a life that has value, a, a life that has significance. Find that life in Him. But your life has no significance. Even you can do a lot. That guy out there, he has a skill. He's very skillful. He's very skillful, but yeah, his life has no significance. Whatever he built with his $5 billion has no significance. It's going to be burned away. And even if you have a life with $5 billion, what a hell of a waste. If you built such a life, and that was a waste. If somebody built something and it was worth a thousand rand. That is not such a shame as a guy that built a life worth five billion dollars and it was all a waste. That is a shame. Because he had the skill. But what makes you different child of God? 
You built something that has eternal value, that has significance, because you did it with your God. Amen. May God help us. Hallelujah. Do we have rowboats <laughs> to get to the... Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen. Come on, guys. Find yourself in God. Last one. Number seven. Is your performance. What makes you different? Is it your performance? So, die sit net daar iets in vir later. Is iets in your performance? Great. What are we talking about? The widow's offering. Jesus sat at the opposite place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting, watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Yeah, man. We must put the offering basket here in front and let everybody say, everybody, look what everybody's throwing in. Okay. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins with only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. Let's look at their performance. Let's look at, you know, what they can come up with. And we can say the rich man, he had a very excellent performance in how he, how he presented himself. Now in what he's throwing in, he's showing the performance, the excellence of his business, of what he has done, what he has not done, how he can be. Uh, that guy is not now coming with image, first of all. He's coming and he's showing the performance. You know, you, your five talents became ten. You did business and your tithing... It's 10 million. Huh, I bless you with a good business. <laughs> no, what am I saying? Jesus looked at the performance. But the man, one man, the lady, her heart, her heart, her heart was in it. You give what God tells you to give. And I'm not talking about money just. You talk, I'm talking about your time. Yeah, you don't have this money, but you have some time. I can give maybe a four hours on a Saturday. And I want to sow as if in an offering, I want to sow a four hours. I'm not going to tell it to someone. I'm just going to say, hey, I want to do something. I'm not going to say, I'm doing this offering. I, accept, I expect a, and accept a hundredfold harvest. Um, don't go for that. You do it because you love your God. What makes you different? It's not a financial transaction. For many in prosperity teaching, what you sow, you will reap. Some of that became a, pros became a prosperity teaching. It became a business deal. There's no business deal with this woman when she threw in that. When she threw in everything, it wasn't a business deal. It was an acknowledgement, God, I respect you as my source, as my everything. And even if I must give my everything, here it is. You're with me? So may God help you, my brother, my sister, that in your performance, that in your performance, your heart will be right. Your heart will be right. But the day when I say, no, but I don't have money, I cannot do this once again. Where's your focus? Where's your focus in that what God wants to do? You hear from Him what you're supposed to do, and you do that, and that's it. That is it. May God help you. May God help me that we will stand out as children of God. And we will stand out as children of God. You with me? God challenged me with certain things. Of certain things that I had to do. Sometimes, in the worst time, in the sewing. And then it wasn't like clickety click, tomorrow there was a breakthrough. Not at all. You know, there's a man of faith. He really sewed. There was a man of faith. His name was Abram, the father of the faith. And you know, you know, by faith he gave himself. He went away. His, his dad wasn't in poverty. They were, they were rich. The family, everybody. And now, by faith, I'm walking out of there. 
me and my wife, and there we go. Oh, shame. Shame. The poor widow that gave everything. Shame. Abram that gave everything. And then the promises. What happened? Absolutely nothing, man. And he still faithfully, faithfully, faithfully served God. And then a child. At last, the poor man. Oh, shame. Like the widow with the two coins. I mean, here we have Abram. At last, this. Oh, boy. What the heck? He believed God says, go and kill him. He's not in line with God's promises for your life. It's not in line with what God said. It's not in line with your faithfulness. It's not in line with everything that you prayed, believed for, confessed, what you stood for, what God said, Abram. What's wrong with you? So he went there and God said, no. I see that you love me. And the next moment there's a thousand kids. No, no, it wasn't like they were kids, but not a thousand of them. God said, like the stars of heaven, like the sand of the sea. And he walked and he walked and he walked. And he sowed with his life. He sowed with his faith. He sowed with his integrity. He sowed with his character. He sowed with his faithfulness. He saw nothing. But from heaven, there's a harvest. Because God is faithful. That's why he says, God is faithful, but you sow, you will reap. Not based on your performance, but based on his integrity, based on his character. But now, for all thousands of years, he is seeing the harvest coming in. Of thousands upon thousands. Children of God in generations and generations. Learning from him as the father of the faith. Old and New Testament. Are you with me? How do you position your life, child of God? Just how what you can get out of today and tomorrow. Hopefully no pathetic immaturity. But when I walk there, that integrity. You are giving a legacy for your children and your grandchildren, your spiritual children. When you understand. When you're not a foolish dad. When you're not a foolish husband. When you're not a foolish child of God. No, we will not be anymore in Jesus' name. Not anymore. Tell your neighbor, not anymore. Okay, we will stop that foolishness, but we will give ourselves because in our children, in our grandchildren, they will find a legacy. Don't give, don't work, and you feel satisfied when you can leave a, a billion rand for your child. If you give that billion rand and your child has no integrity, you leave him a hell of a curse. He doesn't receive the curse from hell. His dad will give him the curse. Doesn't need the devil. But that starts where? With your focus right now. What are you imparting in your faith, in your prayer, in your faithfulness before the Lord? How you serve God? How you bring your children and your grandchildren in your future? Grandchildren or future wife, husband and kids before the Lord. But also the spiritual kids, people that will follow you. In a certain way. Where you actually are not at all better than anyone. But God just ordained legacy. God wants the pattern of double anointing to work. So he put some, some, someone as a spiritual father and someone as spiritual kids. So that he can, his business can work according to his strategy. And that is that there will be double anointing on the double. We go on the double for the next generation. If they understand Legacy. But your father, your mother, your spiritual father, my spiritual father, oh, they have mistakes, man. Come close to them. Ha! Huh. They have mistakes. And hell hopes that you will see in the flesh that you will go for the Jesus, the son of Joseph, so that you will not honor, but you will point the finger as if I have this authority of a throne above God's throne. Where God himself does not even judge. He said the word will judge. Now who are you to judge? If God says he will not even judge. But Jesus Christ through the word. That's the one that will do it. I know you guys are in prayer. I know. Thanks for the prayer. But uh, keep it for later. Great. Are you with me? 
Are you with me? So may God help you. May God help me. Child of God, what makes you different? Ask your neighbor, what makes you different? May they recognize you, you know, and when they really recognize you, they will be jealous. Jealous not because you have so much more money, but how do you get it right to be fulfilled, to be satisfied, to be content in that type of circumstance? How can you still be happy? How can you not be affected by that so much? How can you still have an open heart? How can you not have a hell of an issue with that people? or that leader, or that boss, or that brother. How can you not? And they must be jealous of that quality, that significance that is in you. Let's say there's a significance in me that's only from Jesus Christ. Let it be so in Jesus' name. God, come and help us. Oh, God, we really need you. God, we don't want to stand out to brag, but we want to brag. We want to boast about you and the cross of Christ, about your excellence. And we pray that your excellence will manifest through our lives, Lord. I pray that your excellence will manifest through our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come and do that, what you want to do, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory, all the honor for that, Lord. I pray for every man and woman in this place, Lord, that when we hear this word, that we will not walk away here to see more of the son of Joseph. Forgive us for familiarity with one another here. Familiarity with other churches. Easy to have an opinion about people. Forgive us for that, Lord. We want to, you, we want to respect you as the son of God. We don't want you to turn around, Lord. Turn around. God, you didn't hate your brothers and your family in Nazareth. You don't hate us, Lord. You will always love us. But God, don't turn around because we became too familiar with one another. In brothers and sisters, seeing them in the flesh and not in the spirit. Forgive us for that, Lord. Change our lives, Lord, so that we understand how to walk with you. We honor you for that. We thank you for that, that you come and do that. In Jesus' name. And all say... Amen, amen, let it be so. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen.